Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. For today's video, I'm actually going to be playing the speech from Michelle Ferrari that I mentioned in yesterday's video in its entirety. Now, uh, I saw a lot of comments saying, let's see the speech, let's see the speech. So I figured why not just have the video play it uninterrupted. And uh, towards the end of the video, I will continue with some of the comments from some of the other members or questions that the other members had for Michelle and her responses, which I thought were pretty good. Uh, so without further ado, here you go. The Honorable Member Peterborough Kawartha. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And uh, it is an honour, as always, to stand in the House of Commons to represent the incredible people of Peterborough Kawartha. So tonight on the docket, what do we have here um, in Ottawa in the House of Commons? We have a bill that is put forward um, by the Liberal NDP coalition, and it's called Pharmacare. But I just want to give uh, some, con some context for folks at home of the summary, like this is the official summary. This enactment sets out the principles that the Minister of Health is to consider when working towards the implementation of national universal pharmacare and provides the Minister with the power to make pr payments in certain circumstances in relation to the coverage of certain prescription drugs and related products. It also sets out certain powers and obligations of the Minister, including in relation to the preparation of a list to inform the development of a national formulary and in relation to the development of a national, um, development of a national bulk purchasing strategy. And it requires the Minister to publish a pan-Canadian strategy regarding the appropriate use of prescription drugs and related products. Finally, it provides for the establishment of a committee of experts to make certain recommendations. So you can tell um, with the word salad here that we often see um, put forward by this government that it often just leaves a lot of loopholes to say, well, you know, we're not going to overcommit, we're not going to do anything, and then they, you know, they can skirt out of it when it fails. So what is this bill? Well, it is really the crux of the supply and demand agreement, and it is simply a bill to keep the Prime Minister in power. The leader of the NDP sold his soul for this bill, and it is sad because he's also sold out Canadians. It's frustrating, it's infuriating, and it's exhausting for everyone at home. Because after nine years of this Prime Minister, here's what we have. And I actually have to read it off paper because there's so much that has happened. Doubled housing costs. Highest food bank usage in history. A steady decline in the Canadian economy, meaning Canadians are now poorer by $4,200 per person. This is Canada's worst decade for real economic growth since the 1930s. Facebook groups called dumpster divers because people can't afford food. Crime and chaos at all-time highs. Criminals running free and terrorizing neighborhoods because of this Prime Minister's soft on crime policies. Domestic violence has increased. Compared to 2014, intimate partner sexual assault is 163% higher. Wow. Online child predators up 300%. Recruitment and retention in the armed forces is the lowest in history. Young people believe they will never own a home. People have no motivation to go to work because 46% of their paycheck goes to taxes. I had one gentleman message me and he said, you know, Michelle, we work so hard. And he said, I'm almost embarrassed to say this because he says I make $100,000 a year. He said. Do you remember, like, that sounds like so much money. But our interest rates have, have, do, uh, have increased. Our mortgage costs have doubled. He said, so I decided I'll go take some overtime because we really can't make ends meet. We really have no money left at the end of the month. We can't afford to feed the kids. We can't, we're having to cut their sports. It's taking a toll on my marriage. It's taking a toll on our life. And so he said, I'm going to go work uh, at overtime. So he goes and works $30,000 worth of overtime. And he took home 22,000 or that he was taxed $22,000. Wow. 
out of that 30,000. So time away from his family, time away from his kids, time away from everything to go to work, to do the right thing. Work doesn't pay. So why are people going to work? Why would you go to work? And, and what, a, what a devastation to the soul. Because you know what? People love to work. It's purpose. It's structure. You do work for two things. Because you, you have a purpose in this world and to collect a paycheck to provide for your family. And this Liberal government has taken away both of those things. Our birth rate is the lowest in history. Have you noticed a trend here? These are historical numbers, never before. So people can't afford to have a baby. They're saying, I can't afford, I, I, I can't afford a home, I, I can't afford to have kids. And then they're terrified because you have headlines like, bear with me for a second here, let me see if I can find it. You have headlines like, a BC mother, this is a Global News article, BC mother says lack of childcare could leave her homeless. Oh, guess what? That was promised by the Liberal NDP government that they would make affordable, accessible childcare and it would save everybody and everything would be great. What have they delivered? Chaos. Absolute chaos. You have women entrepreneurs who've given their life. They've sacrificed everything to care for people in their care for kids in their home, losing their business. Because this Liberal NDP government is so ideological that they don't offer flexibility and choice. It has to be their way. Always their way. Control. Control. And that is what has happened. I visited a child care facility in Manitoba this past weekend. Absolutely incredible. And uh, they're able to build 22 child cares in 18 months. It's remarkable what they've been able to do. And this woman said to me, she said, Michelle, you know, it's actually at risk that the Seawell program or the $10 a day child care program is actually a risk to children. She said, because moms and parents are having to choose between feeding their kids and putting their kids in an unsafe child care. That's the reality of what has happened under this Liberal government. Every day, every day there are viral videos of Canadians who say they are moving because Canada is broken and no longer recognizable. No longer recognizable. We have a Liberal Prime Minister with historical records of corruption and scandals. Every single day is another scandal, another corruption. There's zero trust with the Canadian people. This guy, this guy came up to me on the street and he said, Michelle, I just want you to know we're exhausted. He was a restaurant owner and he said, I'm exhausted. I, I can't believe we have a prime minister who's destroyed our country in the way that he has and we are so tired. And it is this NDP leader who keeps him there with this bill that will deliver nothing again. That's right. 22 people a day are dying from overdoses and drugs have flooded our streets and addiction has taken thousands of families hostage. Shameful. I want to tell you this story because I think it's critical. Right now, we have a huge, um, the Conservatives are the only party saying enough with this wacko drug policy. Yep. Safe supply. So how does this work? So I want to explain this to you because I think it's really important. I know there's, it's pretty loud in the house. I don't know if people at home can hear me, but there's a lot of talking going on in the house. But safe supply is, is ultimately this idea that somebody who is dealing or battling with addiction would walk in and they would be given a supply of Dilaudids. On the street, they're called Dillies. Okay, this is, this is a, a, a highly addictive opioid. They are given 30 of them, Dilaudids or Dillies. They go out and maybe they, they, maybe they want to do um, the right thing and, and take them and try to level out. But it doesn't work and they need something stronger. So they sell that. They, it's called diversion. They sell that on the street. It brings down the value of, of the drug. And then they go out and they seek something stronger. And now you have all of this uh, safe drugs. This is how the drug dealers sell it to the kids, high school kids. They go around and they say, hey, this is, this is safe. It's only a buck. Um, your parents can take it. They buy this. They now get addicted to opioids. You have a whole new generation addicted to opioids. 
okay? And then what happens is you have people, they, the, the addict is progressing and they go and they take fentanyl, street drugs, and they die of that fentanyl overdose. And that's why you have people, especially in the NDP, that say they're not dying of safe supply, they're not dying of diversion. They're dying as a direct result of the failed experiment of safe supply. True story. And you have the number one cause of death for children in British Columbia between ages 10 to 18, number one cause, opioids, 10 years old. It's, it's unbelievable. You know, we, there was an outre outreach, worker, outre outreach worker who works in Ottawa and tells this story, tells the story of what is happening on the streets of Ottawa, outside of, of pharmacies, of Dillies being diverted to teenagers. There was a, an arrest in my community, out, just outside of my community, of a 14-year-old with safe supply and fentanyl. This is the reality of what has happened after nine years of this Prime Minister. We have record applications of MAID, including those who simply cannot afford to live, so they are applying for medical assistance and dying. What a time to be Canadian. I've just read you historical stats. Never before in my lifetime have I ever seen Canada like this. It's certainly why many of us chose to run for politics, to correct the course we're on. It's not a fluke. It's not random why we are here. It is all a lack of leadership. That is the reality of what we are dealing with in this country. When you have a leader whose sole mission is power and control, guess who loses? Canadians. Canadians. There are consequences to actions. And there are consequences to policies, and Canadians are feeling the misery and suffering after nine years of this Prime Minister. So how does this impact Pharmacare? Well, this Prime Minister knew he was tanking in the polls, and he had to think up a plan, and he had to think it up quick, just like the good old Grinch. So he says, I know who I can exploit. I'm going to go to the leader of the NDP. He will never be in power, so I'll make him an offer, make him think he has power, and that's what I'll have to keep myself in power. In case an election is called, this is how I'll do it. Every single day, I get calls. Why is there not an election? Why is there not an election? Why is there not an election? We are done. We are done. Everything has an expiration date. Every single thing. That Prime Minister is long overdue his. But he's in power because, you know what? This Pharmacare bill, bill is a big piece of it. So. The leader of the NDP signs a coalition, and you know what, maybe he had good intentions, maybe he thought he was actually going to help Canadians, and maybe he thinks he's going to get something out of this, which I, I thought at the beginning of my term, and now I know, nope, power. Power and control. That's what we want. That, that is what is the driving force for the leaders of the NDP and the Liberal in this House. So, the Pharmacare bill is yet another marketing slogan. Sounds wonderful, but like everything the Liberals announce, they promise you one thing and they deliver another. In so many instances, they actually deliver nothing. nothing. Yeah. I want to tell you a story that uh, is really sad. So they, they often hurt the most vulnerable because they set the expectation here. I'm going to promise you the moon, the stars, the sun. Hey, free day, a $10 day day daycare for everyone. Woo! Oh, except you don't get it, and you don't get it, and you don't get it. But one of you, oh, you get it, that guy right there. But everybody else, you're a loser. Oh, there's one winner. Winners and losers. That's what this liberal NDP government does. Like all their policies. And so they set out this Canada Disability Benefit. And we had the Minister uh, at the time of Disabilities Inclusion come and testify at the Human Resources Committee in October of last year. And, you know, we were waiting, we were having witnesses, we were studying the bill, and we said, okay, uh, you know, what, what, is this, what is this benefit going to do? And she said, this benefit will lift people out of poverty big time. Those were her exact words. So along comes budget 2024. The Liberals are so proud. They come out and they say, yep, here's our disability benefit, $6 a day. $6 a day. So Rachel and John come to my office. They're Council for Persons with Disabilities in Peterborough. And I say, listen, tell me how you feel about this disability benefit. Well, you know, we, we, we're grateful, because this is what this Prime Minister does. He makes you, he shames you. 
because you can't, you can't speak out because, oh, you're you just got to be grateful for the scraps that they give you, right? They take everything away from you and then they give you little scraps and they make you feel little and they belittle you and make you feel small and worthless. And they said, it's basically like this. You know that old game of, of trust, the trust fall exercise we used to play as kids and the, you'd close your eyes and you'd fall behind and the person behind you was supposed to catch you? And... And Rachel and, and Jason, sorry, I think I said John. Jason and Rachel said to me, Michelle, it's like the person who catches you is the liberals. But instead of not catching you, not only do they not catch you, they got out of the way and didn't tell you. And that's, that's the reality of this bill. And it, they make it seem like, oh, the conservatives don't care about this. No, we don't believe you. Yes. <laughs> we don't trust you and we don't believe you because you haven't delivered anything you said you will. And we are the only ones standing in here fighting for the Canadians who are genuinely struggling to survive. That is the problem with this bill. Not once have you proven to us that you will deliver what you said you will. It is historical highs in this country of food bank usage. Housing costs have doubled. Young people believe they will never own a home. And they get up, the Liberals get up and say, we have done a great job. We are such good people, and you should be grateful. We're really good. We're great. Guess what? Canadians have caught on. They know so much. They see right through it. And this is just another distraction. We'll give you this. We'll give you this. So let's break down the facts. Okay. Here we go. So let's break down this. Currently, we are spending more on serving this Prime Minister's out-of-control debt than we are on health care transfers. True. True story. And guess what? That's going to get worse and worse and worse because he keeps spending and spending and spending like a maniac. This is basic economics, basic household budget for anybody who has to... How much time do I have? Four minutes. Four minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> who has anybody, anybody who's ever had to balance a household budget knows this. If you make $100 um, dollars a month but you spend 150 what happens? You lose your house. You, ha you have to borrow the money. Okay, and then the next month you make 100 and again you spend 150 you have to borrow another, so now you're at $200. And then you had to use your credit card to do that. Now your credit card, you're paying the interest. So you're just putting money toward the interest. You're not even paying down your debt. Your credit score goes down. You go further and further into debt. You can't spend time with your family. You're stressed out of your mind. This is the cause. This is Mental Health Week. The number one thing a, a good leader would do is make life affordable. Mm -hmm. That's the greatest gift we can give our kids. They don't need money and things, they need us. They need connection and they need time. And parents can't do that because they're too busy working trying to pay for food and housing that they can't afford because of this Liberal Prime Minister. Yeah. Okay, so there are six million Canadians without a family doctor and wait times have never been longer. Where's the bill on that? Don't see one, okay. The wait time to see a family doctor to specialist is getting, um, to getting specialist treatment. This is crazy, listen to this. So the wait time to see a family doctor to getting a specialist, so something is wrong with you, so you need to see the family doctor. Well, you don't have one, so there's problem number one. Number two, then the family doctor has to recommend you to the specialist. The wait time to get to that specialist has increased 195%. This is the longest it has been in three decades. People are literally dying waiting to see specialists and to get surgery. We have the longest wait times in the world in the world at 25 months for new life-saving therapies. Okay, don't see any money in the budget for that. Do you know who writes prescriptions? Doctors. So if you don't have a doctor, how are you gonna get the prescription from this magical PharmaCare bill? Mm -hmm. The Canadian Health and Life Insurance Association has stated that this bill will spend billions of dollars unnecessarily on drugs for people who already have coverage. But hey, who cares about monetary policy, right? Who cares about monetary policy? What possible consequences could come from not wanting to balance a budget? That's a 27 million Canadians who rely on workplace plans are placed at risk by this legislation. It would create the Canadian drug... I love how the Liberals across the way are defending their Prime Minister who said to, to the reporter, Glenn, we took on debt so you don't have to. Order, order, order. 
No, does, I mean, there is going to be 10 minutes of questions and comments after this, and I'm sure if we put your hand up, the honourable members can get to ask questions exactly on this. So, so it, I'm just going to make sure everybody's ready. Is it out of, is it out of you? Is it good? No? No, we're still at it. All right, the Honourable Member for Peterborough Kawartha. 27 million Canadians who rely on workplace plans are placed at risk by this legislation. It would create the Canadian Drug Agency, which would cost about $90 million to create and perhaps another $35 million to a year to continue. And the Parliamentary Budget Officer says it will cost tens of billions of dollars. But when asked, they don't have an answer. They're not sure. It's kind of like that carbon tax that was supposed to be revenue neutral, but made a billion dollars, but we're not really sure where that money went. Nobody seems to know. Okay. Um, the major cause of their inability to afford their medications for people is the cost of living. The number one reason people say they cannot afford their medications is because of inflation and the cost of living. Oh, and this one's my favorite. Who remembers that $4.5 billion promise from the Liberals of a mental health transfer? Oh, oh yeah, that rings a bell. Hey, where is it? Mm hmm. That's another detail. I can't find it. I haven't seen it. But you know what I do know? I do know that we have ranked 35th out of 38 of teen suicide in the world. That's where we're at in Canada. But you know what? They're going to come save you. They do not deliver. They are the guy who promises. Order, order. Out of time. 23, 30 sec, almost 30 seconds at a time. Questions and comments. <laughs> I absolutely love this Speaker of the House, Chris, here, uh, especially when he goes out of time. He's just a funny guy, but. Unfortunately, Michelle didn't get to finish fully, but this is the question and comments portion where the other members get to chime in. And uh, what I'm going to be playing for you now are some of the ones that I thought were interesting and her and her responses to them. And this actually led up just before the Michelle and Mark situation where she addressed him to stop mansplaining. So without further ado, let's check out some of these questions and answers. The Honourable Member for Chateau gay lacolle Well, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. And um, boy, I, I, I'm just glad I don't live in the world that that member lives in. Uh, it's, uh, yeah, other dystopia. Um, the last time that I listened to this member go on in a speech in that vein, it was actually the uh, C-35, the child care uh, bill, uh, where she went on and on and on, arguing against it, and then at the end of the night, voted, she voted for it. Wow. In fact, wow. every single member on that side voted for the bill. And so I'm wondering, Mr. Speaker, is that going to be the same story uh, with this bill, with the Pharmacare bill? The Honourable Member for Peterborough, Kawartha. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I'm so glad that member brought up childcare because what chaos has been delivered by this Liberal NDP government. And I would strongly encourage her to reach out. You know, there is a call right now from childcare operators and families across this country. They are in dire straits from coast to coast to coast. They cannot access childcare. Women can't go to work because they can't access childcare. Children have nowhere to go. Operators who've built their entire life are losing their business. And you know what? 77% of high-income people are accessing this program. That is on their watch. It is another failure, and it's exactly what this PharmaCare bill will be. Here, here. Hey, come on, questions and comments. Can you come on, Thar, or the Honourable Member for, for New Westminster, Burnaby? I'm both uh, shocked and saddened by, by the member's speech. Shocked because, as she mentioned, Conservative government. And I lived through, as Canadians did, the shockingly bad years of the Harper regime, uh, the record deficits each and every year, bad financial management, the scandals one after another, the fact that they gave $30 billion a year in the infamous Harper tax haven treaties to the wealthy, $30 billion a year, $300 billion over the course of a dismal decade. The cuts to health care funding, the slashing of veterans' benefits. It was one of the worst periods in Canadian history, and this was certainly the worst government 
in Canadian history. Now, Mr. Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm saddened because uh, the member herself, in her own riding, has seen the benefits of dental care already. Dozens of people, 15,000 seniors in the first three days, got, got dental treatment. Dozens in Peterborough, Kawatha. And the reality is 17,000 people would benefit in her riding from farm care. Why doesn't she listen to the 17,000 constituents that will benefit from Pharmacare. Honourable Member Peterborough Kawartha. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. You know what? You know what's sad for me is a liberal, uh, a liberal party that props up, or an NDP party that props up this Prime Minister so that he can stay in power. And and if he listened to anything I said, if you really care about the most vulnerable, the disability benefit, the highest record highest use of food banks in history, is because they are keeping him. In power. That's right. That's yep. right. So who is really standing up for people? That is what I would like to know. But questions and comments, catch your commentaire. Uh, the honourable member for Foothills. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I want to uh, thank my colleague for her excellent speech and, and certainly holding the uh, Liberal NDP government to account on, on many of their promises, which is uh, in many cases just a, a marketing project and actually never re following up on the actual hard work of governing. Yeah. Now, my colleague mentioned a couple of times that this Pharmacare beer bill is nothing more than window dressing, that there's nothing in this bill that actually is a Pharmacare plan. Yeah. This is merely a bill to talk about a Pharmacare plan, to maybe talk about a Pharmacare plan, to maybe later down the road talk about a Pharmacare plan. Yeah. I would like to ask my colleague just if there's anything in this legislation that the NDP is championing that this is such a big win for them just to keep the Prime Minister in power, is there anything actually in this legislation that promises Canadian any change or additional access to health care or health care products? The Honourable Member for Peterborough Kawartha. I love that question. No. <laughs> Questions and comments. I love that answer. Simple, straightforward, cut and dry. No. And you know, it's surprising to hear these other members like Shanahan from the Liberals and Julian from the NDP complaining about what she's saying when Julian's party, the NDP, they have been on a rampage lately blaming the Liberal Party for all these problems that uh, that they're dealing with, uh, especially this disability thing, which is atrocious, but they're the ones that are keeping them in power. They're the ones that are still propping them up. And we all know it's because the pension time is coming up next year. But it's just very hypocritical that they like to complain and then they like to complain and then they like to complain when they are the ones that are keeping the, the person that they could get rid of in power. But again, this is just my opinion. I'd love to hear what you guys thought about the whole speech. I know this was a longer video, but like I said, I just wanted to play it in its entirety. No interruptions except for the few chime-ins that I always do. Uh, but let me know in the comments what you thought about this. And as always, I will catch you guys on the next one. Thanks so much.